Welcome to New Hope Church. It's, uh, my name is Dan Olson. I'm pastor of New Hope, and it's great to be back with you. Uh, just getting back from uh, dropping Gordon off at Wheaton College, and I'm fresh into quarantine. Uh, going to a state with elevated uh, levels means I went a quarantine for a little bit, but that's all right. Uh, I'm coming to you from my study at home, and uh, uh, I'm glad that you joined us today. Uh, welcome. So uh, please visit uh, our website if you're new, uh, newhopechurchli.com, and uh, we'd love to connect with you. Um, I know many, uh, as I've connected with, uh, with people, many people have been asking, when are we going to resume meeting in person? And I get it. I am with you. I am eager for this. Uh, so uh, you can look for information in the, in the co next couple of weeks. We are uh, uh, bringing this together. Uh, New Hope actually is going to have an app that you can download soon, and uh, we're going to be able to communicate with you that way, be able to uh, uh, reserve your place for, uh, for worship and, and whatnot, and, and, uh, and we're going to uh, send those updates out to you uh, in the next, you know, uh, little bit. So, uh, and, I, and I'm hoping maybe in the meanwhile, we can reschedule our service at Eisenhower Park soon. Uh, I got to get through this quarantine first, but that's okay. Uh, but listen, I, let me uh, let me share God's word with you as we uh, as we get ready to worship. It's um, uh, great to great to be with you today, and uh, looking forward to what God's going to do. Uh, this is uh, from Psalm 97. It says, uh, "The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the farthest lands be glad. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of His throne." Uh, the heavens proclaim his righteousness. Every nation sees his glory. For you, O Lord, are supreme over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Uh, you who love the Lord hate evil. He protects the lives of his godly people and he, reject, he rescues uh, them from the power of evil. Light shines on the godly and joy in those whose hearts are right. May all who are godly rejoice in the Lord and praise his holy name. Let's, uh, let's pray. Lord God, we bow before you this morning. We love you. We, uh, we worship you. And uh, Lord, uh, we worship you, Father, Son, and Spirit. We thank you that, uh, that you are who you are, that you are God, that you sit enthroned in the heavens and you reign. And... Uh, uh, Lord, so much of our lives seem out of control, uh, but Lord, we thank you that you are at work, that you are at work in our lives, that you are at work in our church, that you are at work in this world, as, uh, as crazy as things are. Um, you're at work bringing good out of, uh, of all that we're going through. And so we love you this morning. Uh, be exalted this day. Be exalted in our lives, in our families, in our in our church, in our world. Uh, uh, we thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you that he is Lord and King. We thank you that uh, for his death and resurrection, but we thank you that he lives today and he reigns and rules. Uh, and, and Lord, we, uh, we thank you that this is his church 
And so we celebrate that this morning. We ask that you would be at work here in the power of your spirit, that uh, you would help us. Lord, we want to worship in spirit and truth. We uh, uh, ask that you would uh, uh, shine the light of, of, of Christ into our hearts, that you would uh, that our lives uh, would would reflect your glory and that you'd give us grace to trust you, whatever comes. Help us to trust you in everything. So be glorified, Lord, in all we do here, in our worship, uh, uh, in, in the way we live, Lord. Draw us to yourself and, uh, and bless your people. Pour out your grace in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let's declare his praise. For who could stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is Great to see some of you on Zoom there. Sam, I see I see Brantley there attending his first service. That's cool stuff. We uh, are so excited that uh, he's made his arrival. Maybe not as excited as Christine, <laughs> but uh, we are so glad to have our newest uh, addition to, to New Hope uh, here and uh, we're praying for you guys. Uh, good stuff. So... Uh, Let's uh, let, let's pray and let's uh, let's ask the Lord's uh, uh, to be at work in our lives. Heavenly Father, we we just thank you this morning for uh, for the Gads. I thank you for the new life that you've brought into their lives in uh, Brantley, and and uh, we thank you for uh, for his birth and uh, just for how how things are changed now in their uh, in their family. Uh, we ask that you would just be uh, be with them and and bless them, help them as they uh, uh, as they care for him and raise him, and uh, uh, as they adjust to to um, uh, life with him. Lord, we pray that uh, you'd you'd uh, give them uh, uh, just a, a a blessing and strength and and insight. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in our church. I thank you for the people that you have brought to New Hope, and I thank you for the the relationships 
that exist, Lord, and we're eager to to be back together and to be able to to see each other and uh, 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 to be able to connect. Uh, uh, Lord, I pray that you'd give us grace in the meanwhile as we uh, as we still wait for that. But Lord, we uh, we just thank you that that uh, uh, for what you're doing, and um, uh, we ask that uh, that you would be with um, be with us in this uh, in this COVID time, Lord, as 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 it's gone on for months. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the numbers being low uh, here in uh, in New York, and and we ask for our uh, our country that you would uh, help us to get through this. That uh, that you would uh, bring these numbers down, and and that you would help us uh, as a nation to uh, uh, to be able to get um, to get ahead of this thing. Uh, we ask for your mercy, Lord, uh, on the many lives that are that have been rattled by this and that have been rocked. Uh, we ask that you would uh, be with those that are that are struggling, those that are out of work, those that are um, just uh, afraid, Lord. I, I know a lot of people who are just anxious, uh, uh, even at their core. Uh, Lord, we ask that you would come alongside and that you would bless that you would uh, help us as we navigate uh, <clears throat> our jobs, uh, our relationships, uh, even amidst extra tension and extra stress. Uh, Lord, we ask that, uh, that you provide the grace that we need uh, to, that you'd season us uh, uh, with grace and that you'd be uh, exalted in our lives. Father, I pray for, I pray for uh, Evelyn, um, and uh, ask that you would just have mercy on her as she's going through hospice, Lord, for Lou as well. Uh, we ask that you would um, uh, come alongside them and, and uh, show them grace, show them mercy, and um, uh, that you would be with the people in their lives as they uh, care and as they come alongside. Uh, we ask that you would use them uh, for your glory. Father, we, uh, we thank you for... Um, um, we thank you for the the uh, the way that you have um, been keeping us uh, with those that are struggling with with autoimmunes, those that are struggling with health issues, uh, those that are uh, uh, on the front line with this COVID thing, and in and in um, uh, around it all the time, Lord, that you have uh, kept people safe. Uh, like uh, Cheyenne and like Saroon and Zoila and, and Lord, I pray that you'd continue to watch over them and continue to protect them and, and help them as they minister uh, and as they, uh, as they do their jobs, Lord. Um, so Father, we, um, we bring before you all the, uh, all the unrest in our country. We, it, now it's in Kenosha and uh, things are on fire and uh, it's, it's an absolute mess. Uh, we have Louisiana being devastated by a, a storm, Lord. Uh, uh, we, we pray that you would be with those uh, that have been uh, affected uh, by all this, those whose lives are, are um, kind of been torn apart, Lord, the ones that are searching and saying why and saying what now. And Lord, we ask that you would uh, uh, help them to navigate that, that you would um, uh, be at work in, uh, in those those towns, those cities, uh, the, the state, and Lord, I, I pray that you would, um, I, I can't imagine, you know, just even, even the, even the modern convenience of, of air conditioning being cut off for months in Louisiana at this time of day, at this time of the year, uh, Lord, it sounds, it sounds, uh, uh oppressive, but, uh, we ask that you would, uh, be with those that are, that are suffering, those that are, uh, have lost everything, um, Give us opportunity to, to minister, Lord. We uh, uh, we thank you that uh, that you are um, enthroned in the heavens and that uh, uh, that you reign. And we ask that uh, as as we as we look at kind of the the craziness that we would trust you, uh, that you would um, make sense of things, that you would provide for us, that you would. Uh, keep us going, and uh, and Lord, we we just look to you in that regard. We pray that uh, righteousness and justice that are found in you would also be uh, uh, made uh, 
manifest in our lives, that you would uh, showcase those things because you're building them uh, as kingdom ethics in us uh, as a people. And uh, we ask that, uh, uh, that because of that, that the church would uh, uh, have an increasing voice and an increasing hand in this world. Uh, so, Lord, we, um, we just give all this to you and, and we ask that you'd sort it out and that you'd make sense and that you'd help us to trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. I uh, am thankful for uh, John Amendola uh, preaching over at different points last week, certainly, and then at other points during this, uh, this time. I am thankful for the Amendolas. I appreciate their friendship. And, and uh, uh, I've asked Karen to read this morning. Uh, you don't, you've seen a lot more of John than, than you have Karen, but uh, I appreciate you reading for us uh, this morning, Karen. Um, so we're uh, going to give you the mic. All right. Thank you, Dan. We're reading from Revelation chapter one. This is the revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants the events that must soon take place. He sent an angel to present this revelation to his servant, John who faithfully reported everything he saw. This is his report of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. God blesses the one who reads the words of this prophecy to the church, and he blesses all who listen to its message and obey what it says, for the time is near. This is a letter from John to the seven churches in the province of Asia. Grace and peace to you from the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come from the sevenfold spirit before his throne, and from Jesus Christ. He is the faithful witness to these things, the first to rise from the dead, and the ruler of all the kings of the world. All glory to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by shedding his blood for us. He has made us a kingdom of priests for God his Father. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. Look, he comes with the clouds of heaven, and everyone will see him, even those who pierced him. All the nations of the world will mourn for him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God. I am the one who is, who always was, and the one who is still to come, the Almighty One. I, John, am your brother and your partner in suffering and in God's kingdom and in the patient endurance to which Jesus calls us. I was exiled to the island of Patmos for preaching the word of God and for my testimony about Jesus. It was the Lord's day and I was worshiping in the spirit. Suddenly I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet blast. It said, write in a book everything you see and send it to the seven churches in the cities of Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. When I turned to see who was speaking to me, I saw seven gold lampstands, and standing in the middle of the lampstands was someone like the Son of Man. He was wearing a long robe with a gold sash across his chest. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like flames of fire. His feet were like polished bronze, refined in a furnace, and his voice thundered like mighty ocean waves. He held seven stars in his right hand, and a sharp two-edged sword came from his mouth, and his face was like the sun in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as if I were dead. But he laid his right hand on me and said, Don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I die, but look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and the grave. Write down what you have seen both the things that are now happening and the things that will happen. This is the meaning of the mystery of the seven stars you saw in my right hand and the seven gold lampstands. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Okay, thank you very much. God's word. Uh, I... I... Like I said, I, I want to thank John Amendola for uh, preaching last week while I was away. Uh, Gordon and I made our made our trek to Chicago and uh, got him settled in his little on-campus apartment um, with his uh, roommates, and they have uh, uh, begun school, and they are busy. It is good, but uh, 
I got to watch the service online kind of after the fact, and which is actually one of the nice ancillary benefits about YouTube is that uh, if, you know, if you miss out on the services live, uh, you can go back and, uh, and you know, participate or, or, or listen. And so, uh, so that was good. I, you know, throughout this, this whole COVID uh, moment, the, you know, we have these, uh, these great challenges of 2020. Uh, I've been preaching different than usual. It's, uh, you know, if you're, if you've been part of New Hope Church for a while, you know that I typically preach expository sermons. We go through different books of the Bible and uh, kind of uh, work our way through. And the, the challenge of this moment uh, has kind of prompted me to skip around a little bit more and to interact. I, I, I really kind of wrestle with what's happening in our world. And um, I've been trying to be especially sensitive to the spirit in terms of, you know, to let God's word speak to us and uh, uh, to let his word speak to the different issues that are going on, the different areas. Uh, it's been uh, just a wild array of things this year. A um, couple years, a couple of weeks ago, we looked at uh, what Jesus told us, how on earth we're going to experience many trials, many sorrows, but he told us, take heart. Why? Because I have overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world. In John 17, we saw how Jesus prayed for us, for, his, for protection, for holiness, for unity. And then, uh, and then last week, uh, John shared and showed some parallels from, uh, from Exodus. And, uh, you know, after God delivered his people from, uh, from Egypt, led them through the wilderness uh, to Sinai. And, um, you know, and, and I really appreciated, John, what you said about that, that God did not give us uh, principles to live by. What he did is he rescued his people. He established them. And he gave them a mission, and um, and this is all God, and and it was true for the Old Testament believers, and it's true for us. It's true for the New Testament, the, the new the new covenant people of God. And so this morning, uh, I want us to turn our attention to the Book of Revelation. If you have it, uh, uh, if you have your Bible, I hope you have your Bible, and um, you can turn to Revelation one. God has been bringing me there uh, lately, and um, I, I want us to spend a couple weeks on this, um, not really to go through the entire book, but to look at the encouragement, the encouragement to persevere, okay? There's uh, uh, great themes in this book, um, encouragement to persevere in the face of challenges in 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 the in the trials and the sorrows that jesus said will come uh that is one of the great themes in the book there are actually a, a number of them that really leap out if you read it and 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 this this uh encouragement to persevere kind of fits into the larger scope of what i believe god has uh to teach us this moment this the, during this time um, what he wants to say to the church. So, uh, you know, some people look at Revelation and, they, and they, they get really geeked up and they get really excited because this is like science fiction come to life. And, uh, uh, and that's, you know, I, I, I get that. Other, other people are kind of like reticent to even approach it. They don't even know that they want to open up the book because the symbols and the numbers kind of freak them out or, or, or uh, confuse them and they don't know what to do with that. And I, I get that. I, in fact, uh, uh, I was in the second camp really for a number of years. And, uh, but once I picked up, once I picked up, uh, and, and began to read it and to reread it and, and did that several times with the book of revelation, there were these themes that just really emerged. The call, uh, for God's people to persevere is really big. Um, the, there's a call for people to repent and to change the direction they're going and to come in line with, with God's ways. And then there's this, this theme of the supremacy of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and his sovereign reign over history. And uh, there's there's that theme that goes all the way through the book as well. And it's interesting if you look at uh, at verse three, uh, it, it actually says, "God blesses the one who reads the words of this prophecy to the church." And he blesses all who listen to its message and obey what it says, for the time is near. So let's let's take this as God's word for us and uh, and ask for His blessing as we as we look at this passage. Heavenly Father, as we open up Your Word, we need you, Your Spirit to shine the light. We need You to reveal Yourself through Your Word into our lives, into our hearts, into our minds. We ask that you'd stretch us and, and uh, uh, give us insight, that you would uh, bless us in, in, uh, in reading your word and, and, uh, and soaking it in. I pray that it would soak into all the, into all the different corners of our lives. Uh, but but well, Lord, we, we thank you that your word is living and active, and uh, we ask that you'd speak to us today through it. In Jesus' name, amen. The name of this book is is Revelation. Okay, the word is apocalypse, uh, and and you know it, it's kind of funny because we kind of assor, uh, associate the word apocalyptic with kind of the world coming apart, right? I mean, natural disasters, horrific events, and, and lately there's been no shortage of those. Uh, but that's not really the sense here of this book. What John John was picking a, a, a way of writing that was well known. And, uh, and, and, and well used in the Jewish world of the first century. And, uh, and, and so what might seem strange to us, what might seem um, foreign to us was, was not necessarily that to them. It's in terms of genre and in terms of uh, message. Um, and so, you know, we might need to wrestle with that a little bit. But what John does is he writes in a way that's designed to help us wrestle with the question of God's purpose, okay? To wrestle with the question of God's purpose in, in our lives and in this world and in his reign in the world, okay? And so with all the imagery and the visions, it's kind of like, uh, like going to a play, okay? And uh, where you don't really know the plot, where you don't really know all that's going to happen. Uh, I don't know if you've ever done that. I, generally, when I go to a play, I like to read up. I want to know what's going on. Uh, uh, we went to Hamilton in, in Chicago. I, I highly recommend going to Hamilton uh, w when they open up theater again. Uh, opening up, uh, I, I recommend Hamilton, but, but you know, because Catherine was such a, a fangirl, we had like listened to every song multiple times, you know. It, I, I, by the way, I recommend Chicago because it's like a quarter the cost. <laughs> You can like fly there and it's cheaper to go. Uh, but it's, it's um, uh, seeing it was awesome. It was like mind blowing. And, it, you know, I listened to all the songs and just, you know, that, that, that was great. That's generally my vibe. But a couple of years ago, we went and saw, uh, we saw Come From Away. And I think maybe it was uh, Kristen's birthday, uh, something like that. And, and, and I found myself sitting there and the lights, I don't know, it just, it, it was, it was all that we could do to get into the city. And then, and then um, uh, the lights went down and the actors came out and I realized I had no idea what, what, the, what the story was about. But, but as it unfolded, the music told the story and, and the chairs and the props became more than what they started out and, and, and it made sense and, and it, was, it was just, it was awesome, you know? And, and so revelation is something revealed okay revelation is uncovered it, it, that's really what it means is to uncover and make known and so uh the book starts by declaring that this is a revelation from jesus himself okay from from our lord from jesus himself and he shows up right there in this opening chapter he's, he's in the in these verses here jesus shows up and there's this there's this whole, um, it's important to, to understand that there's this whole Jewish idea of God's world, uh, you know, we, we might call heaven. Uh, you, you have God's world, uh, and, and, you know, and then you have where we live, you know, uh, call it earth, this world, whatever, and, and you have heaven and earth, 
And uh, and the thing is, there. I mean, we can ask, where is heaven? How how you know? You say, well, it's up. It's well, how far is it? Miles? What, what, where is heaven? And there's this Jewish idea that that the that the the God's world and where we live are are really not that far apart. It's 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 not that God that, that heaven is is X number of miles away or it's in this corner of the galaxy or whatever. That doesn't I, I, that's not really how it works. It's 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 and and in a way uh, in the Jewish world, the Jewish mindset the, that that heaven and earth meet and merge in in different ways especially in the temple and that was you know this this earthly place uh, uh located in jerusalem uh becomes the place that connects with heaven uh with the very presence of god almighty it's almost like a portal we might call it uh how we we'd understand it if you you know without all the marvel drama uh but but you know think of like a portal that breaks in where, where you have heaven and earth overlap that's that's the idea of the temple and and the way the early christians came to understand jesus is that is that he was in his person the place where heaven and earth meet and and it, in particular, at the cross, you have mercy and justice uh, collide, okay? You have in his death, you, you have the high priest and the sacrifice and this thing going on in, in space and time, in history, in a place on this earth. And it's, it's, it's a, a sacrifice that happens in heaven. And, and, and we have this, this vindication and victory and uh, and, and just in terms of the location of heaven and earth, you know, we saw in, in John 16 and, and 17, you know, Jesus going away to be with the father. It was, it was not like he was withdrawing or retreating or running away. He, he's, he's, it was part of his reigning on the throne. And so, so he, he sends the Holy Spirit not only to live in us, but, but together the people of God become the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that's a big change from kind of this Old Testament idea of a physical temple. Now we have this organic temple or, you know, when I say physical, I mean like a building versus like an organic living temple uh, made up of living stones, made up of, of bodily and spiritually. Okay. Uh, you know, God is... God's at work in this world through through His Spirit at work in His people. Okay, and so so last week uh, uh, John talked about uh, God's people on mission that we are a kingdom of priests, uh, and and that that um, that gets communicated uh, in Exodus 19, but it, it's it's a, it's something that happens gets talked about all through scripture and so when we get to to revelation and, and karen just read that part where it talks about uh, we are kingdom of, of, of priests and and uh and jesus gives this letter to the seven churches there in ancient turkey and 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 as you think of the the churches um you think of the, uh, uh, the the seven churches there in ancient Turkey. Don't think like ancient. Don't think of like glorious cathedrals. Okay. Don't think of gold and tapestry and 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 stained glass. Okay. That's that was not how it was back in the in the first century. Really, think you, you got to think more of like poor people meeting in homes. Like who has the biggest house? How can we all fit? Um. And by contrast, the people around them were building glorious temples. They were building temples to Caesar. They were they wanted to show Caesar. They wanted to show they, they built temples to Caesar. They built them to the different members of his family. And 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 you have uh, this these these glorious, expensive temples built because the people were eager to show how on board they were with Caesar. 
uh, how how loyal they were to him. Okay, and uh, and that's that's kind of the setting for uh, Revelation. Now the spoiler is that this is still going on today. Okay, maybe they're not built to Caesar, uh, but they're built to uh, the things of this world. And so, uh, um, but I want you to imagine these, you know, these early Christians doing their thing at work, uh, doing their thing at home, uh, struggling, maybe looked at like they were a bit weird, you know, from the outside world. Uh, people figured Christians were maybe wasting their time. Uh, following this crucified Messiah. I mean, what, whoever heard of a deliverer that's, that's shamed and executed and, you know, how, how do you, how do you have a shamed, executed deliverer? I mean, does that sound very victorious? Uh, they couldn't, people in the outside world really didn't make a lot of sense out of that. But see, that's where Jesus steps in and he, and he reveals himself to John and John understands that that Jesus, this vision he has is Jesus at the center of everything that God's doing. And so, you know, Jesus is the one through his, through his death and resurrection. What Jesus does is he accomplished God's plan in terms of bringing us back to himself. And so, um, you know, Look at, look at the second half of verse five, all glory to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by shedding his blood for us. That's what Jesus did to accomplish God's plan of redemption. And he made us a kingdom of priests for God, his father, all glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. Look, he comes with the clouds of heaven and everyone will see him, even those who pierced him. So an allusion to, to the cross, okay, that, that, e, that even those that, that uh, uh, put him to death, all the nations of the world will mourn for him. And so it's, it's not just that, that you read this section, it's not just that God is, you know, loves us and freed us from our sins so that we can uh, uh, believe in him and go to heaven when we die. Um, it, it, he makes us a kingdom of priests. And, and it's not about living our best life. It's not about like, okay, well, now I'm blessed and I'm, I'm, I am a Christian. And now I get to live this life where I'm, you know, everything's, everything's great. Yes, he rescued us. He's, he's, he has a calling on us to be his holy people, a people set apart, and he's made us a kingdom of priests. And so, uh, you know, and you know, Jesus, this, this section is talking about how Jesus is coming back. And that's, that's obviously one of the big themes in Revelation, that Jesus is coming back. And when he comes, there's going to be a great revelation where the whole world will see that Jesus Christ is Lord, the one who is pierced, the one who was put to death, reigns, that he lives and he reigns, that he's greater than any leader, any nation, anyone that sets themselves up like they are all that, he will trump that picture. He will, and he'll, com he'll complete the task of of setting his rule on earth as, as, as it is in heaven. And, uh, and, and he's going to set things right. And that's something we can all look forward to that, that, that he, some will find this, you know, great vindication and others are going to mourn, it says. And so, uh, uh, you know, everyone will see him. Um, now, Revelation kind of gives us a picture of the nation's um, making their own claims, and uh, uh, that that they are that they're in charge, that they're plowing along in 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 their way of doing things, and verse nine kind of offers this this different vision of reality. Uh, Jesus steps in, and, and the way John describes it, it's almost like this this dream in terms of of of, of images. Um, he hears a. Uh, a voice like a like a trumpet blast, and um, I mean, there you have the living word, right? Uh, in the beginning was the word. 
uh, uh, the word of the Father. And, um, and John turns and he sees these seven gold lampstands and in the middle of that, someone like the, like the Son of Man. And uh, you know, what does that all mean? And all at once you have this, these visions that draw together. Uh, if you're familiar with the Old Testament, uh, you have some of the prophecies that, that we celebrate at, at Christmas, right? And the coming king that's uh, in, in Isaiah 11. Um, and then you have the vision in Daniel 7. Um, you know, these prophecies find their fulfillment in the Lord Jesus. And so uh, these things uh, are definitely uh, kind of rise to the surface there in Revelation. And so, uh, in fact, I, I have uh, on the screen there, Daniel 7, you know, it describes describes how how God is the he's the ancient one who sits down to judge he's the the ancient of days maybe your bible says and his clothing is white as snow his hair like wool he's seated on a fiery throne he's got millions of angels attending him ministering to him and there's this, this there's this great description of God okay on the throne uh reigning and ruling and you have, you know, and then Daniel goes on to talk about someone like the Son of Man coming on the clouds, um, uh, led into the presence of the Ancient One and given authority and honor and sovereignty over all the nations of the world, okay? The Son of Man is this distinctly human figure uh, representing all of God's people. Uh, but, but, you know, we, we know in reading the, the, the Gospels that Jesus talked about being the Son of Man. He, he, he used that expression a lot. And uh, he is the Son of Man. And um, uh, in John's vision, and let me put this side by side, in John's vision, you have, you know, of the Ancient One and the Son of Man, they kind of come together. And, uh, uh, and you remember what, what Jesus uh, told Philip when, you know, Philip's like, you know, Jesus, just show us the father. And, and, and Jesus is like, Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. And, uh, and maybe that wasn't super impressive to Philip there at that moment. Um, because he wasn't seeing Jesus in all his glory. Um, John gets this picture and, and it's, it's like, G John's looking at Jesus and he's looking through him to the father himself. And you, so you see, he sees the son of man and he sees the ancient one. And it's, uh, it's this great picture. You know, he's wearing this long robe, gold sash uh, across his chest. It's very royal. And, and his, his head and his hair are white like wool, uh, white as snow. Again, allusions to, to Daniel. His head, uh, uh, I'm sorry, his eyes were like flames of fire. And you have that fire uh, of, of the throne and his feet like polished bronze refined in a furnace and his voice thundered like the mighty ocean waves and this you know this great picture uh he holds the seven stars in his right hand and the and a sh sharp two-edged sword coming from his mouth again the the the, the living uh, word of the father okay and it and his face it, it, Listen to this. His face was like the sun in all its brilliance. Have you ever, have you ever really taken it in? I know. Uh, I didn't. Wait, Phil and Marianne are are off uh, celebrating their twenty fifth down in uh, down in Florida, and they are taking in the sun in all its brilliance. So I tell you what, you can't even look at the sun uh, and take it all in. It, it, it and and its its brilliance is is enough to blind you. Okay. Um, his face was like looking into the sun. That's the picture that John gives us of his glory and his power and his majesty. Okay. And, and it's a whole bunch different from kind of this Jesus is my homeboy type approach that, uh, that, our, that we tend to uh, kind of have. Is, is, it's a bit of a corrective to that tendency of of picturing Jesus as as someone that just gives us warm fuzzies and and um, uh, I mean it's really important to it's really important to uh, understand the intimacy of our relationship with Jesus 
but um, I mean, he knows us better than, than he knows ourselves. He, he, he loves us so much that he laid down his life and he's committed to our salvation. He's committed to the, such that we are saved to the uttermost, but he's not tame and docile. He's not, uh, and he's certainly not, you know, kind of Jesus is my homeboy. That's not the vibe. That is certainly not how John is feeling it. It says that John saw it when, when John saw Jesus, he fell at his feet as if he were dead. It's like, it is mind blowing. It is awesome in the, in the truest, largest sense of the word. Okay. It's, it blows him away. And, 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 and I'm sure Jesus needed, uh, I'm sure John needed to tell Jesus, don't be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like, oh my goodness, how do I even take this all in? And uh, uh, what what what's interesting is that we, you know, what stands in contrast more often, more often we're afraid of the stuff that's going on around us, right? We're overwhelmed, we're disheartened, we're like, what's coming next? Uh, and and sometimes life can have that that way. John sees Jesus and Jesus says, don't be afraid. I'm the first and last. I am the alpha and the omega. And yes, uh, you are suffering. People are suffering. Uh, yes, times are strange. Seems out of control. Seems random. Uh, it's difficult. And you don't know what's coming next, right? Release September. We don't know what's coming next. But, but what we need to know is, is and, and what the church of Jesus Christ needs to take in and embrace is, is that the Lord Jesus Christ is standing in our midst. He is, I mean, this, this letter is to the seven churches and they're, they're listed there in verse 11 and then, and they, they each get their own letter uh, in the next couple chapters, and and I actually want to take a look at those a little bit, and uh, uh, we'll we'll take them as they as they come. But 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 the number seven represents perfection, okay? And and the the list of churches is not limited to those churches right there in ancient Turkey. Uh, it's it's. Together, they represent all the churches in the world and what Jesus, uh, it, it, Jesus is, is addressing all the churches, uh, not just across the world, but across time. And, and so from the first century uh, to today and on forward into the future, he's addressing the churches. And what he's telling us is that Jesus, it, it, the Lord Jesus Christ, the, 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 the living, reigning Lord is in our midst. And, and remember, heaven's not this far away distance. It's not far removed. He is in our midst. And he's certainly that way in, our, in the spirit. But it's like you have Jesus in our midst and, and he's here and he's, and he's not worried. He's here and he's not overwhelmed. He's not wondering what's next. What other wheel is going to come off. Uh, what, what, what's next is not going to get ahead of him. Okay. And Jesus told John, he said, listen, don't be afraid. I'm the living one. I died, but look, I'm alive. I'm alive forever and ever. What's death going to do? Can you think of anything that's, that's, uh, uh, doesn't get you in the end other than, you know, death and hell, uh, he says, I hold the keys to death and hell. Don't worry, I've overcome the world. Okay. What's the world going to do? And this is an invitation to us uh, this morning to entrust ourselves into his hands. Um, we don't know what September holds, October, November, murder hornets. <laughs> Jesus says, don't be afraid. I got this. I'm bigger than whatever you are experiencing, whatever it is that you're afraid of, whatever it is that's beyond your control. Uh, and, and, you know, relationships, health, money, the future, 
whatever it is, he's, he's got this. He's like, Jesus says, I'm here and, and I got this. Do you believe that? The world around the Christians in uh, the first century thought the Christians were a bit stupid. They were kind of wasting their time. They were, the Christians were convinced because they believed that Jesus uh, rose from the dead, that he's alive today, that he lives and reigns on high. And, and, and when he says that it is finished, that he finished it. And so worries are not always logical and linear. Uh, so it is with some of the imagery in Revelation. But, but imagine a world where what it would be like if the curtain between heaven and earth gets pulled back and you could see Jesus being there all along, okay? That Jesus is with us through what we're going through. And, and, you know, because of that curtain, that curtain does exist. And, and there is a veil uh, uh, in the heaven, okay? And, and it's because of that curtain, it's easy to ignore him. It's easy to miss his being present. I've told you uh, before about my Aunt Grace. She had this sign on her television. I think it was sort of to put the fear of God in you. <laughs> She has a sign on the television that said, would you watch this with Jesus? And, uh, and I'm not trying to guilt you on that. I, you know, it, it, just to say he is here. She was just pointing out the fact that, you know, sometimes we do stuff and we're kind of like, ah, you know, I, we kind of forget about Jesus. We, we push him to the side. He's, he's here. And so, so it is in our fears. So it is in the bigness of life and the randomness of life, the seeming randomness of life. What's your vision of Jesus? The temptation is to ignore him when it's convenient. The temptation is to go along with life, especially when life kind of gets comfortable. Um, to ignore him. Or it's to cast him in our image. We can ignore Jesus. We can also just sort of make Jesus kind of like us. And we reduce him down to, to you know, and, and the disciples did that all the time. You know, you read, read the Gospels and, 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 you know, pick whichever one. It, there are all these stories how Jesus has to reorient them out of their manner of thinking into his to see a bigger picture and, and he challenged them again and again, and he does to us all the time, challenges our math. That's not the way of the kingdom. There's a different way. And so, so uh, don't just figure that he sees things the way you do. We need to be open to hear his correction and, and to see what, what, what he addresses in the individual churches, to see what he addresses in the Gospels. When he speaks to us, we see his values, we see the, the priorities, we see the, uh, the, um, uh, the ethos of the church, of, of, of the kingdom, and that's what he calls us to live to. And so, um, you know, take this passage here in chapter one, and you see, you see Jesus in all his glory, you see in him in power and in majesty. It's not, you know, the, it, it, Philip could kind of look past Jesus and what, tell you what, Jesus comes in all his glory and all his power is going to be mind blowing. Okay. And uh, uh, at the same time, he is loving and he is gentle and he cares for his people and he is. He is one of us, and he loves us that way, that uh, uh, like a good father uh, cares for his children, okay? It's it, through Jesus we see the Father. So Jesus still speaks through the message in Revelation, giving context for what we're going through right now, whatever it is, however the future unfolds. Um, the, the message is to press in 
press on and trust that the Lord Jesus Christ is, is alive and well, that he is at work in his church, and that you have a place in the body of Christ. You have a place in the family of God, that he has saved us for a purpose, and, uh, and he, and he uh, uh, wants us to, uh, to find that place to fit. And what's interesting, and I'll, and I'll close with this, uh, if you look at verse 9, John, John explains to us that, that uh, he is our brother, that he is our partner in, in suffering in God's kingdom, and in the patient endurance, he says, to which Jesus calls us. And, uh, you know, we're connected to each other as brothers and sisters, okay, right? And, and um, but he talks about that we are, uh, he talks about being partners in suffering. He talks about how life has its trials and sorrows, and uh, Jesus said so, right? And, and, and our suffering is in the context of the kingdom of God. That is under the authority, under the sovereign rule of God. How much did Jesus suffer? How much did, did uh, and, and yet, what are, all that he went through, through his suffering, he won victory for us, right? He won victory. Uh, uh, the servant is not greater than the master. And it's not like we're going to escape tough things. We're often eager to escape suffering. John explains that Jesus calls us to patient endurance. So in the face of challenges, in the face of the unknown, press on. Trust him in the uncertainty. Trust him in the challenges. Trust him in the pain. And know that he has this. Know that he's going to get us through this and more. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we ask for grace to trust you. Uh, we ask for grace to trust you more. Thank you for uh, the faith that you've given us. And Lord, uh, help us in our unbelief. Help us... Uh, to continue to give the things to you that, that are hard to make sense of. And, um, and Lord, I pray that you would uh, just speak life and, and uh, uh, faith and, and grace into our lives, that you would keep us and that you would preserve us and that you'd uh, help us to press on. Give us strength. Give us uh, a passion. Uh, give us faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. pray real quick before we do this next song. Um, just please uh, bow your heads with me. Um, Lord, we just thank you so much for this day and uh, for all the blessings that you give us. And uh, we just thank you for um, Pastor Dan. I just wanted to take a minute and just on his birthday, we thank you for his uh, wonderful leadership and uh, just for allowing him to be able to spread the message and to share the word with us in such a wonderful way where it's uh, understandable and that we can all um, get something out of it. And we thank you very much for um, the leadership at New Hope. Um, and it's going in a godly direction. And we pray that uh, our hearts and minds would be centered on you in this church, no matter who we are. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>
as we uh, prepare to come to the table, uh, let's take a moment to reflect on the biblical picture of Christ as Savior, as Lord, as King. Uh, Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, uh, first to rise from the dead. He's the ruler of all the kings of the world. All glory to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by shedding his blood for us. He has made us a kingdom of priests for God, his father, all glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. Uh, and, and along with, with Revelation 1, we affirm that Christ died for us and, and that he lives and that he's coming again. And so he is the Alpha and he's the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the one who, who is, who always was, and who is still to come. So as we come to the table, we remember his sacrifice, we celebrate his victory, and we look forward in anticipation to his return. As we eat, we give thanks for, uh, uh, for Christ Jesus, for the ever-living one. And, and even as we do this separately, uh, we do this as, as one body. So uh, let, let's pray. Father, we, we thank you for uh, just all that, you've, all that you've done for us in Christ Jesus. We thank you for his blood. We thank you for uh, his sacrifice. We thank you for his resurrection. We thank you for the power of uh, that resurrection power uh, that has brought new life into your people, and we ask that we'd see more of it, and that, uh, and, and Lord, we ask that you just continue to work in us um, to accomplish what you want. In Jesus' name, amen. On the night he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread, and uh, after he'd given thanks, he broke it, and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Take and eat, all of you. And do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Now we continue to worship by uh, giving our tithes and offerings to the Lord, and, uh, and, and as we do this, we do this as an act of worship. Um, I want to thank you for your generosity uh, in, uh, in your discipleship, in following Jesus, even in, in uh, uh, what God's given us, and um, that we can together uh, use uh, we can give and participate and, and see the, the ministry of the gospel you know, extend uh, into this community, into a world that really needs it. So uh, let me invite you to give in proportion to what the Lord has given you. And um, you can go online at newhopechurchli.com and click on give. Um, but uh, And we're hoping actually to share that, uh, I mentioned an app before, uh, soon that'll give you a, a, a faster, easier uh, process, but uh, uh, we'll share that with you when we have it. But uh, now I'm going to ask Mike to uh, Mike Munzenberger to lead us in prayer. I don't see Mike is being on, so I'll pray, Pastor. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the word today, Lord. Bring back to our minds the revelation given to you, John. We await the day when we will see you like the sun in all its brilliance. Help us reach people with the good news of your salvation by using these offerings, Lord. Give us a burden for the lost and bless those who have given. Mm -hmm. 
In your name I pray. Amen. 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 Now, receive uh, the blessing of the benediction. Now, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, who love and trust the Lord Jesus Christ with sincerity. Amen. Go in peace and love everyone. Happy birthday, Pastor.